Greetings nerdlings, and welcome to Amalgam Nation Presents World of Lorecraft, Factioncraft, Twilight's Hammer Edition. The Twilight's Hammer Clan, also known as Twilight's Hammer, Hammer Clan, Twilight's Hammer Cult, or Twilight Cult, refers to a single organisation. It later expanded into a cult as the clan's surviving members and members of other races joined together. The Twilight Hammer's current members banded together to study Chieftain Cho'Gall's teachings and form the current cult. The organisation is considered a clan, but the true clan exists within the cult. The true clan members are not the cult's primary members, nor do they make up most of the cult's membership. The current Twilight Hammer organisation is a little bit different than its original form. No matter which form the Twilight Hammer has taken, however, it has always had the ultimate purpose of bringing about Armageddon to the worlds it inhabits, and will use various means to obtain this end. The history of the Twilight Hammer clan begins with Cho'Gall, the first ogre mage. Cho'Gall was made the leader of an orcish clan after its previous chieftain was executed for disobeying the Shadow Council. The clan's name was then changed to Twilight's Hammer. Its original name and that of its former chieftain was stricken from all records. Under Cho'Gall's leadership, the clan became increasingly nihilistic and eventually sought the destruction of all creation. Obsessed with the notion that the Horde was the harbinger of apocalyptic doom to all the lands that it ravages, the Twilight's Hammer felt a sacrosanct gratification in the destruction of all that it encountered. Led by the cunning ogre mage Cho'Gall, the Twilight's Hammer had strong ties to Gul'dan and the Storm Reaver clan. Its loyalty to the Horde was not as strong as its belief in its sacred mission of oblivion. The battle went horribly wrong, as the Horde had not expected such resilient persistence against them. The two clan leaders blamed each other. It is possible that Kilrog Deadeye planned the attack on Stormwind in hopes of using it to get rid of a rival clan. Cho'Gall survived the rise and fall of Blackhand and the destruction of the Shadow Council. He served a useful purpose to Doomhammer, who, with Gul'dan, wished to bring the ogres through the portal to enforce inter-clan civility. Cho'Gall was placed as overseer for the oil refineries in Tolbarad. When Gul'dan discovered the tomb of Sargeras, Cho'Gall believed that it would herald Armageddon, and so was quick to unlock its secrets. Orgrim Doomhammer ordered the traitorous clans destroyed, and while Cho'Gall was thought to have been killed in the battle, it later turned out that he had escaped with his remaining forces to rebuild and bide his time. Afterwards, those of the Twilight's Hammer, Stormreaver and Blackrock clans who died in the battle kept reliving it in their undead until the Night Elven Warden Maiev Shadow Song did put them to rest. While the truth behind how this happened remains a mystery, the modern Twilight's Hammer retains the destructive nature of Chieftain Cho'Gall's clan. Somehow, one of the old gods has managed to make this clan its pawn, and since that time the clan's numbers and power have dramatically increased. Even humans and other former members of the Alliance flock to join the service of the Elemental Lords and bring about the complete destruction of Azeroth. The largest groups of the Twilight's Hammer now camp near the locations where they believe the old gods and their minions are sealed away. Many wait for Cthulhu's awakening in Silithus, and others serve Ragnaros in the Blackrock Depths alongside the Dark Iron Dwarves. The Twilight's Hammer clan is still seen in Azeroth. The cult was always obsessed with signs of an apocalypse, as had the clan in earlier times, and indeed often sought to bring such doom about by their actions. The Twilight's Hammer has representatives of all races among its members, and employs a myriad of classes, from simple warriors to aquamancers and shadow mages. 
The organization now seems to have a strange fixation on the old gods, worshipping Ragnaros and seeking power from such eldritch places as Marodon, which has very strong ties to the element of earth and thus may hold powers long held at rest. They also show strong resistance in Black Fathom Deeps, the submerged domain of the old god servant Akumai, and Silithus where savage winds blow across the desert outside the ruined city of Ankaraj, domain of mighty Cthulhu. They even have ambassadors among the dwarves of Blackrock Depths in the court of Emperor Dagran Thorsan. In Darkshore, the hammer may be found in the Master's Glaive, the site of a large skeleton of a dead old god. In Ashen Vale, their presence is felt most powerfully in the Black Fathom Deeps instance where they worship the ancient beast Akumai, favoured pet of the old gods. Their leader there is Twilight Lord Kelris, an orcish caster who sits in meditation before a statue of Queen Azshara, waiting for adventurers on the Black Fathom villainy quest in Ironforge, Garrig Bonegrip founded the shop Bonegrip's Runes and Dooms for the Twilight's Hammer and assists those seeking to free Princess Mizrael and the Forsaken Keeper Beldugar in Undercity secretly works for the cult. Their strong activity in Silithus might be ascribed to the presence of Catoon, an old god. Recently they have been particularly active in Silithus using the windstones to summon powerful elementals of the Abyssal Council, which may direct the movements of the organization. The Twilight's Hammer has also made a presence in Northrend, inhabiting the dungeon of Ankahet, the Old Kingdom, deep in Asjol Narub. They appear to be drawn by the presence of the old god yogg saron and the Faceless Ones, which serve him, and seek to bring about their dark plans. An unknown number of Twilight cultists inhabit the Old Kingdom, and are led by Jadoga Shadow Seeker, a servant of yogg saron A number of Twilight cultists are also seen within the Descent into Madness of Ulduar. Their banner can also be seen in the Ruby Sanctum. The Twilight's Hammer Clan becomes a major player in the events of the third expansion. Seduced by the promises of power and the destructive intentions of the Twisted Death Aspect, they join him in his quest to unmake the world of Azeroth. They claim the ancient dwarven fortress of Grim Batal and the surrounding Twilight Highlands, turning it into their main base of operations under leadership of their chieftain, the Ogre Mage Cho'Gal, wreaking havoc wherever they can. They have also enlisted the help of the dangerous Twilight Dragonflight to bolster their ranks. They lead various campaigns against the world, such as the assault on Mount Hyjal, assisting the Naga in their war against Neptulon, or undermining the efforts of rebuilding the World Pillar in Deepon. They also maintain a strong presence within Blackrock Caverns, where they ascend to transform into Draconids, and are sending supplies back and forth to Twilight Highlands. Elemental Beliefs in Cataclysm, the Twilight's Hammer Clan beliefs on the elements and Azeroth's earliest days have been revealed. In the quest Elementary, players come across a book that holds this information. The only legible section of the book reads, In the beginning was Shadow Eternal. Hate blazed forth and fire was born. Wounds scabbed and so begat earth. Cries of anguish birthed howling wind, wherein the skies wept seas of tears. We live in the shadow, the world we know, built of rage, hurt, anguish and sorrow. Military Forces of Twilight's Hammer What the Twilight's Hammer lacks in military training, it more than makes up for in fervour. Every member would willingly die for the cult fully believing the old gods would reward them for their sacrifice. 
Members of the lower echelons of the Twilight Hammer, which is most of them, are predominantly of the non-magical classes, mostly barbarians, rogues and warriors. Other non-magical classes are known but less common. As one ascends through the ranks of the organization, spellcasters become more common. The Twilight Overlords are almost exclusively spellcasters. Most of the spellcasters are arcanists, specifically elementalists. This hierarchical pyramid is also indicative of how the Twilight's Hammer cult approaches defense. The first cultists the heroes encounter are likely to be low-level initiates. Only if that fails to deter them do the heroes face higher-ranking members, increasing ranking power as they plunge into the depths of the temple. To catch sight of the inner circle, the heroes must breach the inner sanctum. The Twilight Lord deigns to fight only if the sect as a whole is threatened. In other words, to preserve his own life or goals. By that point, of course, the heroes are depleted from fighting the cultists, in theory making them easy prey for the Twilight Lord, which makes him look even more impressive to his followers. Should a Twilight Hammer sect be incited to attack another group, their offensive tactics differ little from their defence. Low-level members act as scouts while the main force attacks in waves of incrementally increasing power until they subdue their foe and the Twilight Lord or one of his representatives can swoop in and claim victory. The Twilight's Hammer rarely uses such overt measures, however, preferring instead to scare off those who stand in its way. Accompanying each act of sabotage, kidnapping or assassination is always an ambiguous and gruesome sign that the Twilight's Hammer is responsible. The True Believer Hermit Ortel, an NPC who lives in a cave in the southeast of Silithus, is an ex-Twilight's Hammer member. He will take 10 encrypted Twilight texts which can drop from any Twilight's Hammer member and drop in large stacks from the roaming Twilight Prophet through the repeatable quest still believing. The quest gives no faction but several hours after the turn in he will mail you a container. In the container can be translations of a Twilight Summer newsletter that contains lore information, as well as shadow resist trade skill recipes for cloth and plate, rune stygian and dark rune respectively, as well as scrolls to create an object of beckoning. Before I end this vid, I just want to say that sorry there was no vid on Wednesday. I was having trouble with my microphone and just got it fixed recently. So things are back to normal. Thank you for watching and as always remember, play the game and game to play.